I recently upgraded my cold storage for all of my video projects with this Ugreen NAS DXP 4800 Plus. I made an entire video on that, you can watch it up here. But since publishing that video, I've taken that setup from a basic cold storage solution to what is now a full-fledged network capable video editing powerhouse, allowing me to actually remove all of these SSDs on my desk and edit all my videos off of a network. Today, I'm gonna deep dive into exactly how I did that. Let me explain. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. What's up nerds, welcome back to the channel. So one thing that's bugged me ever since I started creating videos is this overflow of SSDs that sit on my desk. These store current projects that I'm working on like for YouTube, client work, and other things. I also use these to record on my Pixis every once in a while. Now in my last Ugreen video, the goal was to get rid of these SSDs entirely. Now obviously that didn't happen because I quickly realized that 2.5 inch hard drives are not very fast. Oh. That's why we use these external SSDs to store video files we're editing is because they're fast enough to handle 1080p or even 4K playback on a video timeline. Now these hard drives, they're perfectly fine for accessing files and storing them, but in order to directly edit from this NAS, I was gonna need some serious upgrades. Not just in the hard drives, but also my internet. Now, in order to maximize my ability to edit off of this NAS over a network so I can access video files from anywhere, the first thing I needed was 10 gigabit ethernet. This isn't as simple as going to the store, buying an ethernet cable and plugging your PC into it. No, 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 it is much more complicated than that. <laughs> so this is my janky server rack, and this is what takes my lame one gigabit fiber and converts it to 10 gigabit ethernet. It looks overwhelming, but let me break it down. Now the rack itself is nothing fancy, just a budget one from Amazon with good reviews. It's what lets me mount all of the core pieces that make up my home network. Step one is power. I'm using a Stardeck PDU power strip, also from Amazon, with 16 outlets. It keeps everything powered safely in case of surge or outages. Now here's the flow. Fiber comes into my house, goes into a modem, which connects to a router. That's your typical Wi-Fi setup for a lot of people. Now the modem and router are just the standard pieces provided to me by my internet provider. The router is what creates your Wi-Fi and hands out IP addresses. It's what keeps you safe. But here's where we're gonna level things up. I added a TP-Link 10 gigabit ethernet switch. This is what takes that internet from the router and expands it to multiple devices while giving me 10 gigabit ethernet capability. This switch is pretty expensive, but for me, it was absolutely worth it. Now, both of my Ugreen NAS units plug into this switch. That way I can access files over Wi-Fi or over a hardwired 10 gigabit ethernet connection. This is also where all of the ethernet cables that run through my house get plugged into. And don't forget, your computer also needs to be 10 gigabit ethernet capable too. Mine wasn't, and most aren't. So I installed a PCIe 10 gigabit ethernet network card in my PC that was about a hundred bucks. If you're on a laptop or a Mac, I think you can get USB adapters for that as well. I've never used any, but I'll leave a couple of links to some in the description. This step is pretty annoying, I'm not gonna lie, but it's 100% necessary to get fast connection speeds. Because if you go through all this effort to run 10 gigabit ethernet throughout your house, if your computer doesn't support it, you're not gonna get the transfer speeds. Now, I'm not a pro when it comes to internet. There are way better YouTube channels for that, but for me, this is what worked. So now that the internet side of things was fast enough, I needed the NAS itself to actually keep up with those internet speeds. Because remember, 2.5 inch hard drives are nowhere near fast enough for video editing. Now the DXP4800 Plus does support two NVMe slots on the bottom. So I grabbed two Samsung 990 Pro four terabyte drives. These have sequential read speeds up to 7,450 megabytes per second. More than enough to handle a 1080p and maybe even a 4K timeline. On top of that, I maxed out the RAM to 64 gigabytes by adding another stick of 32 gigabytes. This essentially turned the 4800 Plus into my working NAS. This is where I store my current projects while editing, while the actual DaVinci Resolve project file still lives on my PC's internal NVMe SSD for the best performance. I know that that does limit me a little bit as far as editing goes, but for me, I don't edit on the go very often, so I wasn't concerned about it. Now with this setup, I was finally able to get some smooth playback in a 1080p timeline over the network, the ethernet connection. And just as important, I could finally clear all these stupid SSDs off my desk. I will keep one or two for safekeeping. Now before we actually go over speeds 
and set up. My cold storage was another concern. You see, in my last video, I was using four four terabyte hard drives in the 4800 plus, which only gave me about 10.8 terabytes in RAID 5. And that was not gonna last me very long. Now the 4800 plus can support up to 136 terabytes of storage with its four slots. But for this video, Ugreen did send me their DXP 6800 Pro. This thing is an absolute beast. It's got six bays for hard drives that can store up to 196 terabytes. And of course, it can support a wide array of hard drives and SSDs that you can check out on Ugreen's compatibility website. It can also reach download speeds up to 2,500 megabytes per second. Thunderbolt, HDMI, dual 10 gigabit ethernet ports, USB 3.2, and an SD card slot. It even has a PCIe expansion port if that's something you're interested in. Now, I decided to invest heavily into my cold storage and installed three 22 terabyte hard drives into the first three bays and formatted them in RAID 5. That comes out to around 40 usable terabytes. And I've still got three empty bays waiting for future upgrades, meaning I can expand as my project library grows hard drive by hard drive. Thinking about the future, this became my dedicated cold storage and is the place where finished projects will live for the long haul. Then on the 4800 plus, I set those two NVMe Samsung drives into RAID 0. Now with RAID 0, there's no redundancy, but what you get is pure speed. And that's exactly what I needed for my current projects while I'm actively editing. Keeping in mind that all of those projects will be backed up on the 6800 Pro just in case. File transfers were pretty fast, getting close to about 700 megabytes per second transferring speeds. And that was transferring from an external SSD onto the NVMe drives and averaging about 500 megabytes per second transferring to the 2.5 inch hard drives from an external SSD. I did notice with the hard drives, that transferring to those for the first little bit, you get a gigabyte per second, but then it slows down quite a bit to average around like 400, 500, sometimes dropping to like two or three. But typically I was hitting about four or 500 megabytes per second. But with the NVMe drives, it was consistently seven or 800 megabytes per second. So this is the live playback that I'm now getting, having the files accessed from the NAS system. So this is from the NVMe drives that are on my DXP4800+. plus. Now, just to show you guys that these are the exact files, if I reveal the file location here, you can see that we are connected to the network. We're in my hot coffee drive is what I call it. We're in YouTube, August, Canyon Farms, and Blazar Mantis is there. This is a Blackmagic RAW file that we're gonna be editing. The project file is on my desktop NVMe. So right now this is in a 1080p timeline. Let's start with 1080p and then we'll go to 4K. If I just hit play, I can even come in here and start doing some, some adjusting and editing. So let's see if I do that. And we're still getting 24 FPS playback no drop flame frames at all. You can actually see the playback up here. This will show you how many frames are happening, at least in DaVinci Resolve, that's where you're gonna see it. This is with the hardwired ethernet connection. So this isn't wireless and things will change. Speeds will change depending on your Wi-Fi speed. Um, but this is taking advantage, full advantage of that 10 gigabit ethernet connection with the network. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a 4K timeline, even though these videos are actually 6K. So 6K files played back in a 4K timeline. Keep that in mind. Yeah, 4K is really where we're gonna struggle. I'll be honest, even using B-RAW footage on like a external SSD or a desktop SSD, I would get about the same playback. Oh, now we're getting 21. So maybe it's just taking some time to render. Scrubbing is still pretty good, but yeah, we're only getting about nine frames per second. So even though those NVMe drives are just as fast as the NVMe drive that I have in my desktop PC, we're really only getting a 1080p playback timeline at 24 FPS with no drop frames. And here we're only getting about nine and a half, maybe it, over here we were getting like 10, 20. There are some ways that you can optimize this. The best way is to just do a 1080p timeline. And then typically when I'll start color grading, that's where I'll be in 4K. So yeah, we're not getting a perfect 4K playback timeline, but 1080p to me is perfectly usable and for me is worth the upgrade. So what does this actually mean in terms of practice? It means I can now edit projects directly off of the NAS with a rock solid 10 gigabit ethernet connection to my my PC. It also means if I decide to bring on a remote editor in the future, which is unlikely, or if I want to just edit on the go, I can log in and access my projects from anywhere in the world. And it means that I can get rid of these SSDs. Altogether, I now have over 50 terabytes of storage with plenty of room for expansion in the future. Now, I know people are going to ask, how much did all this cost? Well, outside of the 
NAS units that Ugreen did provide me for free, I spent somewhere between $2,500 to $3,000 upgrading everything. That's for the two NVMEs, the RAM upgrades, and the three 22 terabyte hard drives, as well as my entire network upgrade. Obviously, prices will vary from there, and then you also gotta include the price of these NAS units here. But in my mind, I'm considering investing in the future rather than thinking how much it's costing me up front, but more considering how much it's saving me down the road. But at the end of the day, is it worth it? For a casual video creator editing a few videos a month, it's probably not. I think you'd be better off just using external SSDs and hard drives until you find yourself really needing network editing or expanded storage. But for filmmakers or content creators capturing terabytes of footage a year, or for a team of editors working on the same projects, this kind of setup will be a fantastic solution to keep everything in one place accessible from literally anywhere. And for me, it's absolutely been worth it. I hope this video was helpful in further understanding a network video editing setup and cold storage. If you have any questions or thoughts about this setup, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd be curious to chat about networks. And if you are interested in purchasing any of the Ugreen NAS systems or the hard drives I used or the network upgrades, all of those links will be in the description. They are affiliate links. So if you purchase from those links, it does support the channel. Thank you so much if you do. And if you enjoyed this video, then maybe watch this video next. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you never miss out on new young filmmaker content. Good luck filmmaking.